pictures really matter, and they tell us things that only pictures can tell us. In the mid-20th century, all the illustrations that came out in magazines, people in the public just ate them up. People consumed this material avidly. Those magazines have power. Those illustrations have power. The people who were making these things, the illustrators, they tell us a lot about what people were aspiring to. Illustrators were in very, very high demand. They were rock stars in some sense, and it is very much a boys' club. It's the lost art of the admin. We are in the archival processing room of the Modern Graphic History Library, and we are looking through old crap. <laughs> the Modern Graphic History Library collects illustration from the 19th and 20th centuries. We're hoping to give a home to these forgotten items, things that were discarded because they weren't deemed important. This sheds a light on the stories, the lives, and the work of illustrators that have otherwise been absent from the historical record. 20 years ago, we got a phone call from a man named Kit Parker, the son of an alumnus, Al Parker, who'd been a magazine illustrator and a household name during the 1940s and 50s. Kit was trying to find a home for the remnants of his father's career. And I have this very clear memory of Standing in that garage on a rainy day, it's gray. There's this weak fluorescent light spilling down on these folders, even under these kind of terrible conditions. The intelligence and the energy and the life of this work was amazing. And I could tell I was looking at something that was really special. But I also had this sense of this is so sad. This guy had a, had a major career, and his work is in a garage. There was, culturally, no place for this stuff to go. It, it was relegated to a garage because no one had thought very hard about it. So back from Kit Parker's garage in California, this is where the stuff ends up. There's artwork from the 1930s into the 60s and 70s. There's business correspondence. There's reference photographs. It's really a, a, a whole picture of a practice. Doug is kind of obsessed, I think. I am cruising for printed matter that sometimes hides out in these places. Oldsmobile 1960. That was made by two different people. There's one guy who does the car and somebody else does the background. Magazines are focused on what I would call the super now. They have very little sense of future and they have zero sense of past. They exist exactly in the present. And as soon as they're done, it goes in the trash and we make a new one. <laughs> We get calls from people who are ready to pitch entire collections. The families have no idea what to do with these things. I'm on my way to Phoenix, Arizona to see the work of R.G. Harris, a contemporary of Al Parker. I'll be meeting with Harris's son, Craig. Doug is going around trying to find the next great collection. I don't really know what condition this work is going to be in. It's been baking out here in Arizona for 50 years. We'll see what we find. Doug! Craig! Welcome to Arizona! R.G. Harris had a really interesting career. He started out painting cowboys on the covers of Western pulp magazines. Of course, he did that while he's living on the rugged frontier of upstate New York. My dad first got started. He dressed up as a cowboy artist. He wore a cowboy hat, and this is the cowboy hat that he wore. <laughs> it looks great. But he had a, a portfolio of his paintings, and he sold every one of them. I can't believe they bought that. Well, they did, and the rest is history. 
After World War II, R.G. Harris made the move from pulp magazines to the slicks. These were the higher quality magazines printed on better paper, like the Ladies' Home Journal and the Saturday Evening Post. I always like this one. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Well, this one is me. I really didn't mind that modeling job. I bet you didn't. I never saw her before or after. <laughs> These trips are important for learning the backstory on how illustration worked. You know, my dad did a, a lot of work with a lot of different models. Doug, by any chance, do you recognize the person in this painting? Grace Kelly? You're right. Wow. That is a collector's dream. My dad had a big fire going by the side of the house, and he took his paintings and tossed them on the fire. He felt there was no other purpose in having those paintings. Yeah, that's evidence of the fact that there was zero market for those things as objects uh, after the They fact. were virtually worthless in his mind. Which is why it's so important that you've saved it, that you've taken care of it over many decades. It's that's fantastic. True. We're about to leave Phoenix. It's been a great trip. We've seen a wide range of art from the cowboy pulps to the slicks. Can't wait to get back home and start planning the next trip to see the next collection.